hinges, very ornate hinges, very large hinges, it's absolutely magnificent. So, just one more match to come in this Group D tie, and it is the first men's doubles played last. I know it's confusing, but that's because Ho Shu was playing two matches. He played the second men's singles. So it is the scratch pairing, uh, the brand new pairing of Yuta Watanabe and Akira Koga. And there you can see first match together because no wins and no losses up against Jason Anthony, Ho Shu and Neil Yakora. As far as the Canadian pair is concerned, four consecutive gold medals at the Pan American Championships. Well, Yuta Watanabe, who is the Olympic bronze medalist in the mixed doubles discipline with Arisa Higashino, and the current All England champion with Hiroyuki Endo, but Hiroyuki Endo was one of three leading men's doubles players to announce their retirement after the Tokyo Olympic Games. Sonoda and Komora, the other two. So Jason Anthony Hoshu and Neil Yakora. Well, not only four gold medals at uh, the Pan American Championships, they were actually in five consecutive finals, but they had to retire in the final earlier this year. Obviously, must be the first meeting between these two pairs, if it's a brand new pair for Japan. So, Akiro Koki. Kogaka, I do beg your pardon. And Yuta Watanabe. Yuta Watanabe is the left-hander of the two Japanese players. Right. Which is the side? Yep, so that's quite clear. The Canadians won the toss and have chosen which end they wish to start. Mm. Well, that's very surprising. Japanese players have chosen to receive. So it means that the Canadians got to choose ends and will get the serve. So this man Koga, Akira Koga, 27 years of age, usually plays with Taichi Saito, who we saw a little earlier on, uh, born in Fukuoka in Japan. And he and his regular partner, Saito, earlier this month, in fact, just five days ago, reached their career high ranking of 27. His partner, Yuta Watanabe, two-time All England men's doubles champion, also won the All England mixed doubles title with Higashino. 24 years of age, 165, so he's not the tallest of athletes, that's 5 foot 5, but he has been as high as 4 in the world ranking with Hiroyuki Endo. The opponents, well we saw him a little earlier, didn't we, Jason Anthony Hoshu? 23 years of age and he and his partner have actually been as high as 29 uh, currently 31 on the world rankings so Neil Yakora now I was very surprised at this I had always pronounced his name Niall but I was told by one of his teammates it is actually pronounced Neil. 28 years of age from Scarborough. And it's a district of Toronto in Ontario. Jennifer Lee, courtside once again. Very good to see female coaches. 
on the international stage. We have a few, but in my opinion, not enough. As we look at our umpire from Belgium, my goodness, she's been a busy lady, hasn't she? She was umpiring the first match. She's been service judge as well. And Christian Johannesson of Denmark, the service judge. Asking the Canadians to tidy up their kit box before the start of play. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Canada, represented by Jason Anthony Hoshu and Neil Yakura. And on my left, Japan, represented by Akira Koga and Yuta Watanabe. Canada to serve, Neil Yakura to Akira Koga. Love all, play. So, the last match in this Thomas Cup tie. Japan already with the win in the tie, having won three of the previous four matches. Oh, that's a beautiful drop shot from Koga. Service over. One love. Oh, very interesting, the umpire. Also calling Yakura his given name, calling him Neil. defense from Koga. Three, oh my goodness, indecision. You took that so late. Well, you've got to ask the question, why wasn't one of the Canadian players on top of the net looking for a reply had it come over? Look, they're both a little bit too static. Well, in my opinion, Yuta Watanabe is probably the best all-round male doubles player in the world. Clever player, he's got great skills, very quick, brilliant defence. Yeah, and look at that, great deception as well. Wonderful drop shot from Watanabe. Left ho shoe absolutely stranded. Seven tallest of athletes and not the most muscular of athletes. That's a very powerful smash from you to Watanabe. Wow. 
or so far. Japanese pair. I know that was a bit lucky, but they really haven't allowed their opponents into the match at all. Amazing. Eleven love. And the Canadians, the Pan American Games gold medalists. And at the moment they've been totally outclassed. A scratch pairing from Japan. That's a bit, a bit misleading, really, isn't it? Because, I mean, both of the Japanese players are wonderful players in their normal partnerships. Four minutes only for 11 love. reads the game so well. I failed to mention that earlier. I think I could have just summed it all up by saying he's a very complete player. Oh, well, the net called for Yakora. And finally, a point on the scoreboard. from Watanabe. Well, I think we can safely say the doubles department for Japan is a different class from the doubles department from Canada. is human. Just to get the shuttle down, I suspect. Smash again from the left-handed Watanabe. 
doing the damage, setting up the rally. Oh my goodness, indecision. You can't afford to leave it that late. a headache. Head coach Mike Butler in the background there. What do you do against Japanese men's doubles players like this? So game point opportunities. They make it a little over 10 minutes at the moment into the match. Only game 21-3. Great intensity in that opening game from the scratch pairing of Watanabe and Koga. Yep, 10 minutes into the match and we're already at one game one by the Japanese pair. Yeah, Tank in her doesn't need to say very much. Player is very much in control. I travelled into the venue today, sitting just across the aisle of the bus from Watanabe. Mm. So now Watanabe is going to serve first in the second game. Just informing the umpire of that switch. Uh, 
Uh, they just haven't got the defence at the moment, the Canadians, to deal with this attacking onslaught from the Japanese pair. Oh, serve is full called. I was just about to say, what a terrific serve, just changing the angle and serving out wide. And it's no good if it's a fault, if it's um, illegal. A uh, little perspex device. Helps the service judge determine what's above and what's below. 1.15 metres. Oh, gosh. In this final shot, saw that his opponent had turned and was committed to the forehand defence and just hit it straight at his body. That's very, very good awareness from Watanabe. It's gone long. That's landed in. That's a nice return. Five, eight. That's clever, isn't it? What was it? Two rallies ago, three rallies ago. Watanabe hit long with that forehand drive. That time just took a bit of pace off, so it landed in. Oh, oh they both left it for the other. Despite the fact they've been in this partnership for over four years. It's still confusion. that but it certainly sends a message to opponents play back to the net on the return of serve and I'm going to be ready and waiting over, 11, six, so to the mid game interval Japanese pair having already won the opening game at 11 six up here in the second 17 minutes into the match Eleven 
Six. Oh, string was gone. Yeah, he knew immediately. That's why he didn't control the shuttle. attack from the Canadians but the placement wasn't as good as perhaps it could have been relying on power to force a weak reply or force an error and it never came to change his racket, Yakura. Service over, 13, eight. Yeah, it's always a safe opportunity to run off. You play the drop shot and move forward, get your call to your partner to cover the rest of the court. Then you've got the opportunity to run off in the doubles, change your racket. It wasn't the most sensible shot from Hong Shu, but then got a drop shot when his partner was trying to come back onto court. seen the Canadians and especially Yukora dominate that front court area. Yeah. yeah, great awareness again, once again. Watanabe with his peripheral vision can see where his opponents are standing on the defence, where the racket is, and therefore hitting the opposite side of the racket. Well, that's the problem for the Canadians if they're committed to defence, either forehand or backhand. Oh, string's gone again with Yakora. No, no opportunity to run off that time during the rally. The, the player is snipping out the strings of the racket just to release the tension of the racket head. If one, racket go, if one string goes, then the tension can, in the frame of the racket, can distort the racket head and perhaps even crack it. So that's why the players cut out the strings as soon as one is broken. The umpire wanting the coach to do that rather than the player wasting time doing it. challenge. Yep, first challenge of the match and it's for the Japanese bet. They believe their shot was in. The judge called it out. So what does the instant review say? Yeah, clearly in. Good challenge. Correction in. 
episode one. Seventeen. Ten. Play. Yeah. They've just got far too much penetration in their attacking play of yeah, the Japanese pair. Point opportunities for Japan. about that it was a tremendous return of serve 21 12 second game having stormed through the first 21 3 match won by japan 21 3 21 level over 25 minutes for the entirety of that match and the victory for akira koga and yuta watanabe 21 3 21 12 in 25 minutes This is the third match point opportunity. Look at that return of serve. Absolutely superb from Watanabe. Koga watches it and watches it closely. And it does indeed land long of the back line. players take leave of centre stage and well a great performance by the two Japanese men's doubles pairs despite the fact that they were scratch pairings but when we look at the overall match results the shining light for Brian Yang there we have it because he at first Men's singles beat Kanta Sunayama in three thrilling games. An hour and 13 minutes for that one. And then after Canada's success in the very first of the matches of the tie, you can see that in no game after that did any of the Canadian players win more than 14 points in a game. You can see that Nishimoto beat Hoshu 14 and 6. And then it was the second ranked men's doubles pair of Hoki and Saito. 21-9, 21-2. That was devastating performance by then. Then Naraoka, the bronze medalist from the Youth Olympic Games, was simply too strong for Sankiyas. Uh, 8 and 14. And as we've just seen in the first ranked men's doubles, Koga and Watanabe. Another scratch pairing, 21-3, 21-12, their victory over Hoshu and Yokora, uh, confirming that it was 4-1 in the Group D tie. Well, one more uh, match this evening, one more tie, and it's Uber Cup, and it's the host Denmark against Canada. And if Denmark win this one, they secure their place in the quarterfinal knockout stage. That all starts in about an hour and 15 minutes. Until then, from all of us here, bye for now. <laughs>